Hello. Well, this is the final uh, video in the series of Christopher Nolan related uh, videos of his filmography. Um, it's the last uh, <laughs> film of the Dark Knight trilogy. The Dark Knight Rises. Um, now I have talked about this film in the past uh, a couple times. Uh, I've actually defended this film as uh, it's not as bad as people say it is. Um, perhaps you know I'll talk about certain things in the film, um, but not a whole lot for various times because. The reason is because I've kind of sort of addressed stuff like that before, like certain criticisms, and uh, I'll actually link in the up above page or wherever that is, like there, in the description, um, uh, the defense videos I made, like in defense of this film, here are certain criticisms, certain criticisms, um, I usually just made like the big criticisms people had because so many people nitpicked this film and I will reiterate again as to why I believe they nitpick certain moments it's because the Dark Knight was huge you know it was huge whether you like the film whether you love the film whether you don't like the film you can't deny the Dark Knight was huge it was a big success um it was, had a lot of things going for it, and spe particularly the final full performance of Heath Ledger, because the film he made after he was making after this movie, that movie was um, Doctor Parnassus, and he died in the middle of filming that, unfortunately. So he didn't get to finish that movie. So that was another thing. It was just it was just huge. You couldn't go anywhere without it. So, in a lot of ways, same thing here. Huge movie. Very huge. But a lot of excitement. Uh, possibly even more so than The Dark Knight, because you're following up The Dark Knight, and also it was said to be the final movie in the trilogy. So when you have a film like this coming out after the Dark Knight, and this is the final m movie in that trilogy, the final story of Bruce Wayne's journey as Batman, you're going to have so many expectations that if you don't, you know, if you do not Make an absolute masterpiece with zero flaws at all. It's garbage. That's what a lot of people were like. It's just garbage. It's not good. And I think the contrary. Um, I feel it was a fantastic movie. It just was a movie that so many people had so much uh, anticipation for that their anticipation sort of overshadowed their judgment in terms of the film itself. They couldn't accept the movie for what it was, and therefore, even if they didn't think it was better than The Dark Knight, they couldn't enjoy for what it was. They couldn't enjoy the good parts. They just saw a lot of negatives to the movie. And the thing is, there is no perfect movie. I've said this before. Even my favorite movie, Star Wars, the original one, my favorite movie of all time, the movie I think is the best film of all time ever made, all that stuff. It's not perfect. It has flaws. It might be minor flaws, but there are still flaws. There'll be flaws in every single movie. It's uh, a way impossible. Also, you can't uh, make a movie to please everybody. I mean, even with The Dark Knight, not everybody loved that movie. Not everybody liked that movie. So, you know, detractors there, 
you know, I don't know, maybe they'll be detractors with this movie, but even fans who, there's just a lot of fans I saw who had so much anticipation for this and were just completely disappointed, thought it was just bad. And I don't think it was. Um, basically, the rundown of this film, as I've given a plot to others, uh, the other th two films, basically, uh, it's been eight years since Batman has been seen. Bruce Wayne has essentially put himself in isolation, not as only as Batman, but just from the rest of the world. He just has gotten, like, he's been depressed. You know, like, Rachel is gone. She's di she died in the previous film, and it's just, he, he just doesn't, he just doesn't feel like himself anymore. And he felt like the only thing that could have helped make himself have any purpose, which was Batman, well, he can't do that because, well, uh, he had all the, all of the, um, crimes Harvey Dent committed, put onto him, and also he killed Harvey Dent accidentally, but he still killed him. All of that on him, and all that together, it, it's not a very good, uh, situation for uh, him to be in um, and I addressed that other stuff with Harvey Dent because people overlook that they say oh he just died because Rachel's or no she, uh, he just quit because Rachel died he didn't die uh, otherwise he wouldn't be in this movie that wouldn't make sense that Bruce Wayne's dead but we're talking about Bruce Wayne and Batman but anyway you know I wanted to address that because uh, oh he Quit because Rachel's dead. No, there's a lot more to it. Did you even see the end of The Dark Knight? I mean, he kept being Batman in, until the very end of The Dark Knight. Uh, and before that, and um, I'll even get more into that, but um, before that we saw Bane. You know, Bane and his amazing entrance. Uh, having people bring him and a couple of other guys to CIA like operatives and uh, to take Bane or they know Bane like oh they know Bane yeah well he's gonna go there and get this dude Dr. Pavel who was instrumental into the later into the film he wants to know what he told them about Bane and just the people that uh, he has, and he says he's got nothing, so, and then, uh, he basically crashes the plane, he has another plane fly above them, that plane, and then guys come down and shoot at a lot of the people, Bane punches the dude out, and, uh, essentially, and he just, you know, he just, they just go on with this plan of tipping the plane over, but nose down, and the wings eventually fly off. And then the Bane's dudes cut the tail of the plane off, and once that's off, uh, they're able to come in and shoot at uh, anybody that has a gun and is going to defend themselves, and then they uh, draw some blood with Dr. Powell. They have a dead body there already to be used as reference to Dr. Powell and have their blood there. Like, oh, there's Dr. Powell. Oh, he was there and he's dead too with all these guys. Bane grabs Dr. Powell after the well, blood, blood was taken off of, out of him. Tells him, now it's not the time to fear. That comes later. And then they go off into the airplane, and, um, that's when we get to see Bruce Wayne, where he is, um, and when you first see him, he's in a, sh it's a shadow, and you hear of him, and, uh, Jim Gordon is there, celebrating, like, Harvey Dent Day, like the anniversary of Harvey Dent's passing, and, but all the good things he did, all the good things he was, he was able to get criminals locked up, help break and destroy the organized crime, and, um, 
all was good, you know, it seemed. But, um, yeah. Harvey Dent, uh, you know, uh, it seems as if, uh, if you see a fly, I apologize. I killed one earlier, or I thought I killed it. Actually, I did kill one. I thought that was it, but apparently not. So if you see a fly, I apologize. I don't have a fly swatter nearby, so just a heads up. But anyway, um, here or see one, but you know. Anyway, uh, Gordon wants to, he pulls out a letter, which he wants to say, but then thinks maybe now is not the time to reveal the truth about what all happened with Harvey Dent. Because he's like, you know, because of the Dent Act, like, you know, so many organized criminals are gone, they're locked up, streets are safer. Things in the city have looked up for first time in years, so, yeah. It's thanks to the Dent Act, and he goes off, and then there's conversations with... Oh. Matthew Modine's character, uh, Foley, and uh, some other guy, you know, just a congressman, I believe, yeah. And uh, he just says, he's a. Uh, Talking how the mayor's gonna dump Gordon in the just later on because you know it's peace time you know he was useful for when it was like war time when things were bad like the Joker and all but since Dent Act happened there's no real point for somebody like that to be commissioner anymore I guess and uh, see uh, we are also introduced to uh, Selena Kyle. Throughout this, um, she's just as a maid. She goes she, uh, to leave food for Bruce Wayne, and uh, as she does so, she's going around and getting some fingerprints. And she also has, takes Bruce Wayne's mother's pearls. Bruce Wayne comes, sees that. Sees his food, the door's open, surprises her by shooting an arrow <laughs> uh, at a target he's got in there and, uh, yeah. Frightens her, but then she's heard things about, like, having scars, long fingernails, and all this and that. Like, sort of like Howard Hughes. And, um, is he, uh, Talks to her a little bit, and he looks at her, and he says, it's a nice necklace, and uh, it's a necklace that has a, and, uh, and a safe, but uh, that was not, uh, you know, it's supposed to be uncrackable. She drops this facade. She's had it going on like, oh, sort of a meek, quiet uh, person. And then her real persona shows, and uh, he has a cane because of you know the limp he has at the end of a dark night from falling and hurting his leg. Um, so he has a cane, and she walks up to him, and she kicks that from him, and then she goes up to her window, jumps out looks up at her, or where she just was, uh, when he gets up, and she goes into, like, the congressman's car, asks for a ride, and then, uh, they just leave, and also, uh, there's a character, um, Miranda Tate, played by Marion Cotillard, um, who becomes very important later on. She's a Wayne Enterprises. She's a member of the executive board. Um, 
does basically throughout the film she does what she can to try and help him through the grieving process he's still in and tries to get him out of that and um, yeah the as the movie goes on you know when uh we see Selena Kyle with giving the Bruce Wayne's fingerprints away um, to a rival of Bruce Wayne's, uh, like John Daggett, one of his guys. Uh, uh, she has the congressman with him, and uh, yeah. She has the guy, she has somebody come in and use his phone to make a call just so somebody can uh, come and give her <laughs> what the guy wants, so yeah, just so she can get some money and all that and uh, when that happens police come and uh, yeah things aren't too uh, all good and uh, when the police arrive um, some of the uh, Henchman Daggett has um, gone to the sewers and uh, Selena leaves. Uh, and as the police are going down there uh, into the sewers, uh, unfortunately, the explosives and stuff goes off because, uh, and then Gordon down in the sewer, he goes into. Gets captured by Bane's men, and he's a uh, you know he sees Bane, he sees all of this stuff they're doing, and uh, he eventually escapes and gets into the falls into the sewer. Starts and um, uh, John Blake, a, a rookie officer, finds him because that was mentioned. It was something earlier when we were introduced to John Blake, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. Um, like we like to find out more about him a bit, and uh, we even see. He, John Blake's, where we see the uh, bat signal, still broken and old. You know, time's gone on and it's all rusted and stuff. I know I'm going back and forth, but, you know, I'm trying to get the major beats, but since John Blake enters the picture and finds Gordon, I thought that was a good place to talk about him. But, find out later when uh, John Blake goes to Bruce Wayne's place to talk to him about needing Batman to return and how uh, he, ba he basically knows he's Batman because he too is an orphan and saw Bruce Wayne once go in the orphanage to visit them and he has you know, have two women I say and he's visiting Orphanage was home and just seeing how everything he was like seeing how all everything was going there and he, he just looked at Bruce Wayne and there was just something about him that you know and there's a look that he like he was angry because he said I moved, I went into house to house, I was an orphan, various foster homes, and, you know, and 
lot of anger and a lot of pain because his parents died. His, his mom died, but he was too young. But he remembers his father dying very well. And he just. Uh, yeah. He remembers that very well. And it wasn't very good uh, from that. We don't really hear a whole lot, but he just it just doesn't sound very good. Basically, um, you know, he 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 looked at Bruce Wayne. He knew who he was because he saw this face. It hit the pain. It was something he learned to do a bit too late. Um, you're supposed to hide it, have a face of happiness, and be sort of positive when you're not and uh, hide the pain but he learned that too late um, but yeah and from there uh, there's also this whole thing with Alfred and Bruce talking about how you know they find out who Selena Kyle is with Bruce Wayne going back down to the Batcave uh, learning who she is, and um, because of you know, and he's like, uh, Alfred's just trying to get him to come out of the slump he's been in for a long time, not be so beating himself up, and he's just like, you know, he tells him about this fantasy he has every time he goes on vacation to Florence, how he orders the same drink, he says at the same place in this certain cafe, and what he does is, you know, as he's just there having his drink and everything, he hopes that one day he'll look across from him and he'll see Bruce with a wife and maybe some kids. Perhaps he, he'd see him and um, they'd see each other but neither would say anything because they would both know he's happy and that's all Alfred ever wanted him but because he's not living how he should because he's not happy Alfred doesn't is not doesn't you know he doesn't really exactly know what to do. He's going to try and do, I guess, whatever he can to get him out of this funk and try to get him back into the world. And eventually Bruce Wayne does. Um, uh, you know, Selena Kyle being a presence truly made him, you know, want to go out back and go out into the world again because she intrigued him. She kind of sort of challenged him in a way, if that makes sense. You know, she sort of, yeah, she doesn't care who he is. Yeah, she doesn't care at all. He's Bruce Wayne. He's rich. Where other people just like, it's Bruce Wayne, he's rich. He's got to suck up to him. Maybe he'll give me some, like, give me money, or invest in this or that, you know, help me out. She doesn't care, and that intrigues him, and, um, there's a ball going on for a charity event, and, um, he eventually meets up with Miranda Tate, who's been trying to talk to him about, um, a fusion reactor that's been discontinued. His company has lost profits over his discontinuing of said project. And he did that because he learned that it could be used as a weapon and how it could be dangerous. And while, yes, you know, clean fuel and all that, you know, it could be very beneficial. But at the same time, learning that it was as a weapon, uh, he discontinued it. And as a result, the 
company uh, lost some uh, quite a deal of money from the sounds of it, and uh, he just kind of has Miranda Tate trying to get him to bring it back. You know, you can use this, open this, uh, redo this, but have this fusion reactor uh, help benefit everybody, the city, clean energy, and this and that, but he just is very hesitant to do so because it's like, you know, I don't know, you know. Sounds very good, but at the same time, if somebody in the wrong t uh, uh, fell in the wrong hands, like somebody else was in charge, you know, who's to say it would benefit everybody like it should? That's a uh, that's Bruce Wayne's thought on the matter, but uh, yeah. As he's there, he sees Selena Kyle, and that's the main reason he's there because he wants those pearls back. Um, Eventually, he sees her dancing with somebody, and he cuts in, and the two dance and talk, and uh, she says how everything he thinks will last won't. You know, it won't last. Uh, th things seem fine now, but sooner or later, everything will be essentially flipped upside down, and it will not be good. For him or the rich, and you know, and everybody will have to, and they'll have to live like her and others who are so fortunate. And he says, basically, he says she's kind of she's looking forward to this, and she says she's adaptable. And um, and earlier, uh, uh, he's saying how you know, like basically, you don't truly know who really I am more of me today, but she doesn't care. She's like, you know, you're just a rich, she's, thinks he's just a rich stuck up, like all the rest of these rich people go to charity events and balls, pat themselves on the back and be like, I'm doing this for a good cause. See, I, I look better. Uh, I'm rich. I donate to, insert charity here, insert blank here, you know, a good cause. Um, she doesn't see Bat Bruce Wayne any different. He's just some guy who's rich and just doesn't care. I'm rich and there you go. And obviously, we the audience know different. Um, and so does she later on. Um, but, you know, he eventually takes the pearls back from her, saying that he can't let her have them. He says, even though like, those pearls look good on you, but I can't let you have them. As he's about to go away, she grabs him and kisses him, and then walks off. And the guy she was with says, oh, "You scared her off," and gives him his cane back. Cause he, when he, bro when he uh, <laughs> broke in to dance with her to talk, he handed the guy his cane, which was fairly humorous. And then the guy comes back and takes it. And um, when he goes back to tr to goes out to get his car, he says, uh, the valet says, oh, your wife took the heart car home. So he goes, my wife? And then we see her in his car, and you know, she took it, she, she kissed him, she took his, like, his ticket, and just got his car. <laughs> and as we later See, you know, he uh, has to call Alfred. He gets in and he just kind of makes a joke like, I'll just use it. Oh. He goes, Don't worry, Master Wayne. Still gets. <laughs> he basically is like, yeah. Takes a bit a little bit to get the swing of things again. Um, also he, uh, now being more out in the open, he goes and, you know, he visits Gordon, wearing a mask and all, 
he also went to the hospital he was at uh, to uh, see about his uh, knees and everything and just everything thing about his physical condition he says he's like lost cartilage he has a whole bunch of broken bones and this and that and he goes he doesn't recommend he go hella skiing So basically, he just went to the hospital to <laughs> really to talk to Gordon, but also to see about how he is physically. It's not good. Um, and when he's talking to Gordon, he goes, he's just talking about how this evil like with Bane and all. Because the bait already struck at the stock exchange, because um, they used his fingerprints and a transaction that eventually causes Bruce Wayne to be bankrupt. Um, that happens sometime later, but you know, uh, it's just. Gordon, you know, he's talking to him about how, you know, we won. You know, Batman was no longer needed. But Gordon is saying Bruce Wayne, or Batman is needed. Uh, Batman has to come back because to, uh, this evil, like Bane and all people in the sewer, this evil is coming back. It's a new kind of evil, but it's coming back, you know. You need Batman back. From there on, he goes to his company and visits Fox, talks to him, and uh, he goes and, you know, shows Bruce Wayne some stuff, and he also gives him something for his leg. And one of the things he shows him is a specific plane. It's like a airplane goes, you know, what is this? He goes, well, you know, this has a long, boring, uninteresting Wayne Enterprises name, but he just took it to calling it the bat. He goes, and yes, Mr. Wayne it does come in black, you know. I'm mentioning some of these things because it just shows some of the sense of humor that's in these films because, you know, these movies are pretty dark. Um, Without little sense, uh, little quips here and there to lighten the mood here throughout the film, it would be pretty bleak, and pretty dark. It's like, wow, we can't even have a little fun in here. But you know, that's the plot as of now. Eventually, uh, uh, the. Stock exchange happens. Which leaves Bruce Wayne bankrupt. Finds out later on. Like the following day or whatever. And, um. Batman. Uh. Eventually. Returns. Um. Uh, with. Because of the stock exchange. Um. Follows Bane and he sees their, uh, you know, they've got uh, some people taken hostage so that, you know, we can, they can get out and not be shot at by the police. So the police chase them and then here comes Batman going after them, but then the police also then chase after him even though he's taking down bad guys well he's still viewed as the bad guy because well he killed Harvey Dent and uh, killed all these other people so that's still very much a you know that still goes on throughout the film and uh 
eventually Batman saves the remaining uh, stock exchange guys who were used and uh, when he knocks one guy out he sees something to uh, this whole transaction that happens it completes and uh, at that time he sees the uh, police have surrounded him and then he goes and escapes and uh, has everybody follow And the police follow him down to some alleyway, and then that reveals the the bat for the first time in use. And he flies off. And um, during this whole thing, John Daggett uh, promised Selena Kyle uh, something in particular, which was a way for her to start a new life in. Basically, you know, just be free. You know. She doesn't want to stay in Gotham anymore, and uh, she wants to use this clean slate to get out of Gotham. And Daggett, you know, he was like, you know, hey. He double crossed her, so she's there trying to get it. She sees Batman on the news, as does Gordon. And uh, when she confronts Daggett about this, um, she does. <laughs> she takes him hostage and. Uh, for a moment and uh, goes takes him up to the roof and interrogates him about the about where this clean slate is and he's like yeah well it, he basically says how she can get it and how it can be done she says oh, it's like too easy as well it's true and then later on, we see a bunch of Bane's men come up. She says, she says to stay back or she'll kill him. And then Batman's there and says, they know, they just don't care. And then they fight. And um, <clears throat> as they're fighting, uh, <clears throat> he basically smacks the gun out of Sanya Kyle's hand and she... Because no guns, no killing. She's like, you gotta be kidding me. And then here come more guys with guns and they're shooting at them. And then, you know, Bane comes up there and he jump. Batman jumps down and she follows into the bat and then, you know. About to, she was some about getting the car with strange men. Her mom told her not to do that, and he goes, "This isn't a car." And then starts up, and he flies out, flies him away, and uh, eventually he sets it down on another building, and uh, basically says, "Oh, you shouldn't be messing with people like that." And, Basically, she needs. Uh, she explains like, you know, all I needed a way out. She said this was his. Uh, she promised he promised her something. He didn't fulfill it. So sucks. And uh, one thing that's interesting is when Batman, for a moment, turns to look away, he turns because there's a. Police helicopter goes, turns, says, Miss Kyle, and she's gone. And he says, So that's what that feels like. 
it's kind of funny because throughout the series he leaves everybody you know people are talking to him they quickly turn and he's gone and they're just like oh, you're by myself it's quite it was actually quite funny um, when I when you see it on the big screen and even to the to this <laughs> to this day it's it's a it's a line of Still gets a chuckle out of people. Um, and later on, the film, you know, spoilers also. I know it's pretty late, but hey, if you haven't caught on by now of me talking about this movie or any of these films, well, because later on, he, as Bruce Wayne, uh, you know, he goes and talks to. Selena Kyle later on. After, of course, you know, the whole thing with Alfred. Um, Alfred is not happy with what Bruce Wayne's doing. You know, he basically thinks he wants to basically get killed. The point he made earlier, that he just... He thinks, you're afraid if I go out there... I'll get killed. He's like, no, I'm afraid you want to. He's afraid he wants to get killed. And, um, he says he's basically just done with helping him be Batman. He's like, I'm just done. I'm tired of it. You know? And his whole reaction of Bane and how he fights is reminiscent of a League of Shadows and that he's never come across anyone like that. He goes, I'll fight harder. No, you just, you don't understand. You can't. You've never fought anybody like this guy. Because when they first initially saw him, they did some research, you know. He learned about, a, a little bit about Bane, and I guess as Bruce was being, oh, being Batman, Alfred looked more into it, and he's just like, you know how, uh, he just can't. He can't be Batman anymore because... You know, he has been for a long time. Uh, but thanks, he, he can when he jumps in, jumps back into it. Um, thanks, he'll be able to beat him when he meets Bane. Um, and Alfred, he's doing what he can to try and bring Bruce back to reality. He can't exactly be Batman anymore, even though, yeah, you might have worked out just a bit to be able to do what you did a little bit years ago. But to fight Bane, you can't. And he's doing what he can to bring him to this realization. And he says, uh, talks about Rachel and how in her letter she's going to marry Harvey Dent. She chose him over Bruce. Bruce doesn't believe this and all that. And I, he basically sort of denies that how dare you use Rachel uh, making me stop because I'm using the truth and it's about time we let it have its day. And then he basically that's it. You know, Alfred's like, you know, uh, I've cared for you ever since I heard your cries in this house. You know, and I don't want to see you get killed. Because I guess that's the end. This is the end. It's the end of. Like you and me, and uh, Alfred leaves. Bruce Wayne opens the door, and he's surprised. Like when he wakes up, he's surprised Alfred's not there. And then Lucius Fox is there, with the paper, to uh, let him know he's broke. And uh, yeah, from there. Uh, he appoints Miranda Tate, uh, CEO of uh, he has her become the CEO and he resigns because he, he just he has to resign because it's like well things are are not good they're not 
going well for the company and he's like you know gonna have to have her be in charge so you know it's just it's it really sucks to be Bruce Wayne at that time you know it's it's not good um, meets Blake again later when he leaves and they're repossessing his car and all Dad gets upset because, well, he wanted to be in charge of Wayne Enterprises, and it's not. And he isn't, so he basically ensures she's the head of the company when he resigns. Um, and when he's with, and when Bruce Wayne's with Blake, he talks about Batman and why, what the whole point was, like, why? wearing a mask, he goes, or about Batman, he goes, it's, Batman's a symbol, it doesn't matter who Batman is, you know, it could be anybody, the point of being, bat of Batman was, people don't need to live in fear, people don't have to be afraid, that can be a symbol of hope, that's all Batman was supposed to be, in a lot of ways, is, in a way, that's the sort of the core of Batman, the character, you know, he, it's a symbol of hope for Gotham. You don't have to be afraid. You, you can f face the criminals head on, but of course, well, as we, sorry, as we know, that doesn't always happen. And, um, yeah. See, uh, uh him later eventually talk to Selena Kyle again, but to try and have her find where Bane is so he can, so his friend who wants to talk to her and how, uh, you know, which is something I talked to earlier about Bruce Wayne when they were up on the roof about Bruce Wayne and all. Why, God, why she won't had his fingerprints and all. And, um, but now it was like he, like my friend, you know, a powerful friend, and wants to know. And she's sort of also before that kind of cracking jokes at him, like uh, you're poor and all. And because so you're on the street, because her friend who lives with her, Holly, she's trying to have Bruce Wayne give them money and she says he doesn't have you know, a fine let him man he doesn't have a single penny to his name there's no point in getting any kind of money out of Bruce Wayne at this moment and he goes he mentions how he's able to keep the house and how the rich don't uh, go broke like the rest of us um, but after a bit dis brief discussion she'll think about having Batman meet with, you know, Bane, or find Bane, or get, bring him to him, whatever what you want to call it. Yeah. As he's leaving, she says, you know, she's sorry that he took all of his money, and she's, and he says, no, you're not, and he just leaves. That was also a qu quite a funny moment. Um, Christian Bale actually had lived that line. In case you didn't know. Um, later on, we see Daggett and uh, Bane talking, and how he's Daggett's upset that he's not in charge of Wayne Enterprises, and he has uh, Daggett's assistant to le leave them. But he says uh, he's in charge. And you feel in charge, and all he does is just put his hand on his shoulder. And that's intimidating, and that's just enough to be like, oh, you know, that's not very, that's not good. And he basically and then kills him after, like, your money has been good until now. And from there, uh, 
we see um, Bruce Wayne later get home and it's raining and uh, uh, Miranda is there waiting and the door's like this. Yes. You have a key and she goes, Well I never need one and um they eventually go in through the back and come she's looking around some of the stuff or like some of those pictures she's his parents uh, as did uh Selena and Kaya when she was there. So his parents. So his picture of his mom and dad and his mom had the pearls on, and um, that, that's like what really sparked her to wanting that those pearls. Um, but yeah, they go inside and out of the rain, and uh, eventually it's probably they have sex. Yeah, you don't see it, but you know it's very implied, and. Um, After talking a little bit, she eventually falls. She falls asleep. He gets up and then he goes down uh, and goes to be Batman. And then he meets Selena, Kyle, and the the sewers, and uh, fight through a bunch of Bane's men. And eventually, he's led to where Bane is. But then a door comes down and like. Slams and shuts him in the earth bane. She says how she had to have them stop before they... Uh, she had to basically double-cross him or they'd kill her. And he, Batman says she's made a serious mistake. And Bane is behind him saying, oh, The serious is yours, I fear. And then we later... From there, uh, we find, you know, Bane's walking and he's, like, saying how, you know, like, to stand on ceremony, Mr. Wayne. And from there, uh, uh, they pre proceed to fight, uh, which, uh, you know, Bane is beating Batman. With all the blows and there's no music or anything, it's so impactful. It's like you can hear it all. It's so, ugh. It's, it's like you can hear everything when he's getting beaten. It does not sound good for Batman. And, um, at this point, she, Selina Kyle, knows who Batman is. It's Bruce Wayne. So yeah, she really did miss, she did judge him a bit too much on his appearance and his stature in Gotham, and he, basically, Batman is broken. He gets picked up and his back's cracked to the point of being hurt, and then from there, uh, basically, in exchange for Selena Kyle helping uh, Batman, Bruce Wayne was gonna yeah, like, give her something she wants, like some sort of. Or Batman was gonna give her what she wants as a way out, but you know. Wanted to give her the. Bring her to Bane, bring him to Bane, and she did, and he got beaten. And then the next time we see Selena Kyle, she's trying to get out of Gotham, and then she's uh, apprehended, and yeah. Bruce Wayne's also taken away, and his mask is broken too. And it's ripped off his head. Um, and uh, as. 
we see the next day in the film uh, Blake's trying to find Bruce Wayne but he's not there so that's when he thinks about Selena Kyle possibly because you know, seeing her um, at that bar where on the night where Gordon was shot and uh, was down in the sewers and all. And also, from when Bruce Wayne had him stop from driving at her place instead of just home. Uh, he wonders, did they kill Bruce Wayne? Because after talking about some of the stuff as to why he, she's there, like a congressman, you know, he's pressing charges and all that, and how all of that went down, and how the congressman just he's going to press charges for basically kidnapping him. Um, yeah. I know this is going a lot longer than normal, but please bear with me. I'm talking about the plot. I'm talking about this because I've never talked in depth about this film really before, except all the problems this film seems to have by people. So, yeah. Anyway, from there, we see Bat Bruce Wayne is in this pit, in this thing where, you know, so many people try to escape but can't. It's like a prison. And um, earlier he said he was going to fulfill Ra's al Ghul's destiny of destroying Gotham. And he also steals Bruce Wayne's technology from Wayne Enterprises, like the vehicles and stuff. So then he's in this prison. And um, he says to him, they're going to destroy Gotham. And that the reason they didn't kill him, he didn't kill him, was because he doesn't fear death, he welcomes it. And he says, well, once I, once Gotham is ashes, then you have my permission to die. And from there, we see Bane go back to Gotham. It's more of the League of Shadows as his, basically, gang of mercenaries and all. Since it was revealed there, and then him getting beat up by Bane, all that, then the inmates tell the story of a child born, raised in the prison, prison, and they escaped. Uh, Bruce thinks this is Bane because he was there, even though in the film he basically says the contrary you know, says how when Batman tried to use Dark as a way to overcome Bane he says you think darkness is your ally you merely adopted the dark I was born in it molded by it I didn't see the light until I was already a man by then it was nothing to me but blinding Sure, that's a bad impression. Uh, apologize for that, but I don't know if Bane's like uh, it's hard not to do his voice or a variation of that voice. It's very interesting. So once uh, he gets back to Gotham, uh, Bane lures a good portion of the police underground because. Gordon wants him and all those guys smoked out. He wants them out. Get as many cops and people as you can down and to do so. But um, before all of that happened, you know, he comes back to Gotham and he goes to Wayne Enterprises and has. Gordon and, or not Gordon, Fox and, oh, 
Miranda, show them where the, you know, their reactor is. And then Dr. Pavel, who was there in the beginning where he got him, is going to make that into a bomb. And later on, when all the police are down in the sewers looking for um, Bane and his guys, Bane's at a football game uh, with some of his guys. And um, just as the game begins, he pushes a button and it detonates the entire field and only like one guy on the field lives. And uh, places like a lot of the The great seats, like where the mayor is, all those seats for people who are able to afford to be in one of those places. Uh, I forget what they're called off the top of my head, but you know what I mean. It's like exclusive places with windows, you're able to watch it. And um, basically, you know, those were blown up, uh, a whole bunch of things in the streets are they explode and all the uh, all the places that are in the sewers are um, they're uh, they're all in in there and um, they, they can't get out and Bane later goes on and has a speech about how they're gonna take this city back and all of this and that and he reads from Gordon's letter that he took when they uh, brought him into the sewer system to show you know uh, the commissioner and um, uh, being uh, reads that on television after, uh, you know, Blake goes and also goes to the hospital to get Gordon out because, you know, he's there and he's vulnerable to some sort of attack. And, um, he has him stay at his place and he reads to the whole city his new on the news his letter that he was going to read but he didn't do because he didn't think the time was right he says how Batman didn't kill uh, you know Batman was saving his son and Harvey Dent was going to kill his son and he did all these things that Batman took credit for and uh I praise the man who threatened to kill my child, and I cannot no longer hold on to this lie. And he resigns as commissioner, and you accept this man's resignation, and all this intercuts with Blackgate Prison, which Selena Kyle is in now. And uh, she, uh, you know, shows she's capable of handling herself when we see her going to the prison. But everybody is escapes or is let out, and um, uh, the corrupt people have to punish and all this and that. Like we're gonna have a revolution, but meanwhile, the, the, there's this bomb and it's it's mobile, you know. And also, he broke Doctor Pavel's neck at the football field, and he was the only guy who could, you know, stop the bomb. That's like the whole reason for that whole presentation and he later just decided go into this prison here follow me we can continue on with this so this whole th uh, as this whole thing goes on and some people are snuck up snuck sneak into Gotham to help like special forces and all um, maybe they're over there 
whatever. Anyway, Special Forces are there. They're all killed. Uh, it's not fun. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne's trying to get out of the pit. Doing push-ups and sit-ups. Continuously hearing about this woman that was pregnant and all. A child, a child had a friend and a protector. But then this child got out again. Bruce thinks this was Bane, but it's more on that, obviously, later. And he keeps trying to get out of the play, the pit. And, uh, also before he does all the push-ups, you know, this doctor helps him, keeps him alive. Like, essentially, he has his vertebrae go back into place. It sounds very painful. Sorry I'm all over the place again, but I don't know, I'm just trying to tell all about this as much as I can, because I've never talked about this as in detail. I've always, again, I've only talked about the problems people have with this movie. So now is my time. I kind of, I'm all over the place. I apologize. It's more structured for the other two, and all the other movies. With Nolan's, but anyway... When he was hanging, because he has to hang, and when he's able to touch the ground, that's when he'll be able to move and walk, probably. That's when he begins to do push-ups and stuff. But he sees a vision of Ra's al Ghul, and saying how, throughout all that, throughout all this, what he's trying to do, what Bruce thinks he, he was trying to accomplish, all he was able to do was a lie. Get a lie accomplished. A lie that things are good when they aren't. Now, you should be the heir to... You should have been the heir to what you wanted to do, but no, you wanted to be a crime fighter. And now you see how pointless it is and how Gotham needs to be destroyed. He says, no. And, uh, yeah. There's Liam Neeson's cameo. Uh, but, yeah, uh, he, uh, but eventually, you know, is there a TV for him to watch what's going on in Gotham, to watch it burn, essentially, and he just has it, he really wants to get out. He sees people before, you know, trying to get out of the pit with the rope and around them and jumping. So he, too, does that. Um, yeah, he fails a few times. Um, and the, like the final straw is when he sees those special forces guys hung. On TV for the whole world to see. Bruce doesn't like that. And uh, he's just determined more than ever to get out of, Go uh, out of that pit and back to Gotham. Uh, and f finally, you know, uh, when he has like a. He hears his father. Saying, like, don't be a, like, why do we fall? And, um, uh, he just wants to get out. There's one guy in the uh, inmate who goes, like, you know, want to get out. Well, then, like, the thing is, you don't fear death. He goes, I do. And the pressure says, I do fear death. I fear dying in here while my while the city, my city burns. He goes, well, then make the climb if you fear death like that. He's, you know, he does have a fear of death, you know. Before, he said he was just angry. He wasn't afraid. Well, he needs to be afraid. Of, has to have a fear of death in this situation to help propel him to have that courage of getting out. And because he has that, it's like, well, just make the climb. He goes, well, how? He goes, like the child, without the rope. 
So he finally goes, goes up without the rope to this ledge. He jumps, he makes it, uh, and before there's these bats that fly out of this hole, sort of symbolizes him as Batman. He, but hey, he jumps, he makes it, climbs all the way out, and then he throws a rope in for everybody else. Everybody's like, woo! Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, later, he returns. Um, and the whole time throughout this, you know, so many people are also... <laughs> There's like a kangaroo cord of sorts, and uh, head by uh, Killian Murphy as the jo uh, as the scarecrow, not Joker. Joker's not in this movie, or even mentioned. I respect to Heath Ledger. But yeah, he's <laughs> like there. There's two options: uh, death or exile. And exile is walking across ice that's cracked, that is cracking, and um, if you make it across. The ice um, to the other side, you're allowed to go, and you can you're able to leave and never come back. <laughs> Basically, um, <clears throat> and uh, you see some people do that, and uh, yeah, it's a fun cameo for to see Killian Murphy in, but, yeah, as we, s as that all transpires, and later on, you know, Gordon's trying to get people to come together, and all, but some just don't want to, because they don't want to die. And, uh, Bruce Wayne comes back and introduces himself to she's Selena Kyle. He offers to give her the, that, uh, whole, uh, that clean slate she wants, but she has to, she wants, he, she, he needs her help, uh, to get her get him to Fox, she does, and they knock a bunch of people out, get Miranda Tate out as well, doesn't need your help, and they, once they get Fox out, um, he suits up and all, this is how, earlier, like, the autopilot was the only thing that was really not working, uh, for the bat, and, uh, they're checking some stuff on it. He goes, you know, it works fine. Let the auto He goes, oh, but that's what you're for. So, later on, they, uh, uh, Gordon and others get captured and, uh, trying to find the bomb on a truck. Not as successful and Everybody's taken away, and except for Branda Tate, who is there helping them, and because you know, it's sort of my plans and all this and that, but you know, if you're done in the wrong hands, now uh, I'll just help do what's right. But they all get caught. Uh, Bane has her taken away and separated, and that night, uh, they're about to, when they're all sentenced to, sentenced to death by exile by the Scarecrow, uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, Saved by Batman, who knocks out all the guy guys there, trying to have them go out onto the ice. 
and he has a flare for Gorn to use and then throw down, and that causes a fire. And there's like a big Batman sign that says he's back, which Bane says is impossible. Um, and then we see uh, Blake uh, begin to free some of the cops, but then he's beaten by somebody he comes and is he gets one guy out yeah, that guy is shot and then someone guy throws a grenade down you know a lot of people have to get out of the way and Blake's about to get killed but then Batman comes and helps him out and says you know to him when they're fighting like if you're gonna you're never gonna fight like that. You have a mask. Yes. I'm not afraid to show my face to these guys. It's not for you. The mask isn't for you. It's to protect the people you care about. Gives him a little bomb. It says, Count to three. And throw. So, so he does. Does and he explodes, but nothing really happens. And then he the bat shows and sh shoots. And all the cops are uh, then are able to get out of the tunnels, um, the sewer systems, and all the tunnels and all that. And uh, Batman then gives Selena Kyle his uh, bat pod to use. She just says, like, you know, she'll sh shoot the hole for people to get out of Gotham through the tunnel. Yeah, there's a tunnel. I'm sorry. I'm getting confused. The sewer system is where all the cops were, and now the tunnels is where the people can get out of. And uh, Also, there's a deal thing with the people on the bridge who are there overlooking it and how, like, if they, you know, they're told, hey, if anybody, you know, if one person on Gotham is, uh, crosses the bridge, uh, then Gotham is blown up. Doesn't matter. It's not gonna wait months. Um, so, yeah. And, um, Batman says there's more to Selena Kyle than just shooting the tunnels open and she leaves. He says there's more to you than that and she just asks him to come with her. You know, just save yourself and leave. You know, she do, he doesn't know Gotham anymore. You know, you don't owe these people any. And that, or he doesn't owe them anymore, and he, he's given them everything. He goes, not everything, not yet, and he just leaves. And then in the morning, you see all these cops there, including Foley, who Gordon sort of berated for having his, you know, wife answer the door for him. You know, can't answer the door for himself, and now, like, you know. Things are going to go bad, you know, why not just go out fighting for what you believe in instead of just hiding in your house. Um, and he eventually does, and as they're all uh, walking to fight and are about to be f fired on by the tumblers that have been possessed, or, yeah, taken by Bane and his guys. The bat comes down and shoots them, and then, or shoots one, and uh, the fight begins, and then he comes down, and the two, Bane and uh, Batman, fight in, in daylight the first time. The Batman's fighting in the day, and 
they're fighting, and eventually he's like, he's about to be overpowered. But Batman knows of the mask, you know, Hulk has the pain, and holds it away, you know. And, um, he eventually overpowers him, gets that, some of the stuff knocked out, or to where he's not able to have the pain be at bay, and then Batman's there, able to overpower him, and takes some guy with a shotgun, takes that, beats that guy, and then throws Randa the gun to watch for other people. Like, watch what, like, uh, check, watch the doors, make sure no one, you know, comes in, and he wants to know where the trigger is for, you know, the bomb. Goes, tell me where it is, and then you have my permission to die. And the whole time as this is going on, and everyone's fighting, you know, uh, Gordon and people, as, you know, and others are, like, they finally, like, located the bomb. And what they've now decided to do, like, it can't, like, there's, like, a remote access and all that uh, Gordon has. If you put it with the bomb, it should stop it from detonating. Well, later it comes to find out, well, you, if you get it hooked back up to the main reactor core, it should be fine and stable. Um, but... Uh, as a uh, later C, uh, it's not gonna work out too well. And um, Miranda Tate is then revealed to be Talia Al Ghul, the child who escaped the pit. She stabs Bruce in the sides, and uh, from there, you know, is able to. She helps Bane with his mask, and then. He ties up uh, Bruce Wayne, and uh, she's about to say, she's like, you failed to save Gotham, and I should have just initially let it, you know, uh, should have just let it burn the uh, first time, and uh, as she pushes the button, you know, Gordon has the thing with the bomb to stop it, and, um, how you've only delayed the inevitable, so, you know, as that goes on, uh, some people get, a lot more cops get killed, like Foley is killed, um, and, uh, After she leaves Bane with Batman, he tied up. He says, we both know I have to kill you now. You know, basically, she wanted Bane to not, not kill Batman. Just have him witness and just know he's failed. And um, He's not going to do that. He's like, it's going to kill him anyway. Point the shotgun at his face, about to pull the trigger, and he's killed by Selena Kyle, who came back to help him. And uh, then a chase goes on to try and uh, stop the bomb from going off, and to get it back to the core. And uh, this results in. Uh, Batman killing Talia al Ghul, having it run off the, the truck, run off the road, and, uh, and yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's <laughs> the things don't look good, and um, before Talia dies, she says how you know. She uh, reworked it so that the 
She remotely floods, destroys the chamber reactor so that uh, they can't reconnect the uh, bomb to the core. Can't do it. Uh, so Fox is there. He was waiting for them to get back so they could do that, but uh, he has to get out of there before he's, you know, uh, drowns. Uh, so Talia al Ghul dies. And then uh, Batman's gonna decide he's gonna take it out over the bay. Like, uh, take the bomb out, fly it over the bay, and that'll be that. It says he's no autopilot. And then Slinga Kyla says, could've gone anywhere, did anywhere, done anything, came back, and he goes, so did you. She says, I bet, guess we're both, both just suckers. And then she kisses him, and then he goes to the bat, and uh, Gordon goes over, says, you know, I never asked for who you were, he goes, hey, you're all right, well, shouldn't the because the whole time he didn't or never really cared who Batman was. He goes, but shouldn't the people know who saved Gotham? Goes, a hero can be anybody, even if it's doing something as simple as putting a coat over a young boy's shoulders and let him know the world had an end. Um, that was his way of saying, "I'm Bruce Wayne," and he remembers. And we see that clip of him putting his father's jacket over his shoulders. From there, uh, he takes the bomb up, flies it over buildings, shooting some buildings to I guess have a better uh, better line of flying over bay, and uh, does so. Um, everybody sees the bat with the bomb flying over. Flying miles out, and then he looks. Batman, you see him look, and goes, "Like, all right, I've done this. I've fulfilled what I've I set out to do." And then the bomb blows up, and uh, that's uh, basically uh, seems to be it for Batman. Um, and the coming days, people mourn Batman, have a statue in memory of him, and then uh, we see Gordon, Fox, uh, Blake, and Alfred at his, at Bruce Wayne's funeral. See a headstone of Bruce Wayne. He's died. Alfred's broken up, says, yeah. says to his parents, trust in me, I failed you. Like you trusted me with your son to raise him and all, and I failed you. He's now he's dead. And um, as all this happens, we then see uh, what's going on with other some of the other members. Like you know, Blake does, he quit the force. He doesn't want to be a cop anymore. He even threw his badge out in the river, out of the bay. Just doesn't want to. He doesn't think it's right that like nobody will ever know who saved a city. He goes, they know who it was. It was the Batman, which echoes what he said earlier. He goes, but didn't, don't you want to know who he was? He goes, I know exactly who he is. He's the Batman. Um, and uh, from there, we then. See Fox talking to the guys uh, who are looking over the, the uh, one of versions of the bat, talking about it. Goes, you know, just tell me how I could have fixed it. Like the autopilot goes, well, Mr. Fox is already fixed. Check the name on the ID. He goes, like, well, who fixed it? He goes, Bruce Wayne. Which is that's a sign that you know 
he lived, you know, he, like, ejected, which I've always maintained when he shot the buildings, because that explosion and the bat goes and flies over, he ejected, he got out of the bat, and, like, just glide down to the city, you know, it's never seen, it's never spoken as what happened, but it seems to be very implied, because, like, uh, a lot of this film really is, um, well, I'll get to that later, but in a moment, I guess I should say. Um, but after Fox, that realization of Fox has, we see also uh, Blake earlier got something from Bruce Wayne out of an estate when that's all done. Like his, like Wayne Manor will now be a boy's home, and basically orphanage for like the for youths you know without parents this is where they can stay and uh yeah and uh, he gets a bag of stuff see our coordinates and we also learn his legal name it was Blake John oh, I'm sorry no uh, she is my legal name uh, she good the woman says, after giving the bag to him, choose your first name. I like that name. Robin. Is it. Which, some don't like, but, you know, it's like, throughout the whole thing, you know, John Blake is a combination of various Robins. You know, Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake. You know, he's a mixture of all of those. He just never puts on a suit. Um, to be Robin. And, um, I thought that was quite clever. Of no one, honestly. But, to wrap all this up, uh, the coordinates he's given is to the Bat Cave. Gordon is up on uh, top of GCPD and he sees something. And then we see Alfred in Italy, this restaurant, and he orders his drink. And as Blake looks up around at the with the light, bats come and fly and swarm him. And then Gordon walks up and sees the bat signal and it's fixed. You know, Bruce Wayne fixed the bat signal. Hinting, you know, Batman's alive. Bruce Wayne may be quote unquote dead. Batman may be dead, but he will never truly be dead. You know, he's still going to be alive. And, uh, with that, uh, we then see Blake walking a bit more, and, uh, we then see Alfred look up, and he, we then see Bruce Wayne with Selena Kyle wearing his mother's pearls, which were also referenced to be missing, uh, as one of the things of like the estates of like not being there, and they just smile at each other and kind of like nod, and that's it. And then he gets up, walks out, walks out of the like a cafe after he's done. And then as John Bla John Blake is walking, the, the platform he walks onto begins to rise, and then that's it. Literally, the Dark Knight rises because it's sort of implied John Blake is the next Batman or he's the next uh, hero of Gotham. I mean, maybe Bruce Wayne comes back to help train him to be Gotham's protector and he might be his own hero later on. Not Batman. You know, Blake might be, but yeah. Um. Yeah, that went on quite longer than I intended. Uh, I try to keep these within an hour, but I kind of rambled on about the plot. But I talked about the plots of the other two films, but uh, yeah. But I just like this film. I've kind of indicated what, what I love about this movie. Uh, I love Christian Bale's performance, again. And Hathaway I thought was very good as Selena Kyle, Catwoman, or the cat. You know, they call her... The cat, which was is a reference to the early days of the character, 
They called her the cat instead of Catwoman. She was a cat burglar. Um, Michael Caine, uh, Morgan Freeman, um, Gary Ullman are all fantastic as, you know, their roles. Alfred Pennyworth, uh, Lucius Fox, and James Gordon. They're all great. I think this was Bale's best performance as Batman Bruce Wayne. Um, Tom Hardy is amazing as Bane. He's incredible. Uh, I don't think I have a specific favorite Catwoman exactly. They're all very different. The only one I don't really like is Halle Berry's because that movie just was not good. Um, but if I ever had to choose who my favorite Catwoman was... I think it would be, by default, Anne Hathaway for being in this trilogy. And also, this is my favorite movie of the uh, trilogy. As I've said before, and I think from how long I talked about this, it should be very obvious as to, as to that. The only, as I've mentioned, weak links in these films, I think the weakest link is Miranda Tate, um... Talia al Ghul and Mary Cotillard did a very good job playing her, but the thing is, uh, it's like she was supposed to be this plot device of a twist, and they did use that twist. Done very well, or not, uh, depends on who you are. It really, you know, it's up to imp interpretation, really. W w do you think it worked? Do you think it didn't? Whatever. Uh, I thought it, did, it was fine. Um, the only moment what, that really people say was bad with her was um, how she died. She didn't die very well. Um, I think she that and that take was used of her dying because I think she did that she delivered her lines as she was dying very well. But then when she died, it just it was like what the You're doing real well, and then you just. He didn't die very well. Um, also, I feel the character was a bit underwritten, like, in terms of the female characters in this film. Selena Kyle was a better written character. Um, and again, she's very important to the film. I mean, Talia al Ghul is, too, because, you know, she's... She with Bane... Or leading the League of Shadows, and or she's working on the inside in Wade Enterprises and helping give, I'm sure, Bane information about this and that. That's how they get access and find, and they set their base in the sewers up underneath Wayne Enterprises, where all those all the tumblers and stuff are. Um, but yeah, I think that I think of all the, she's like the weakest link in this film, um, honestly. Uh, I think she did a very good job. Uh, Marion Cotillard did a good job of playing her. It's just the very end, uh, that performance of her dying wasn't that great. Um, but you know, uh, up until then, she did a fine job. It's just the character wasn't written very it wasn't well as well written as the other characters I should say uh, about not to talk now uh, I kind of had a problem <laughs> without throughout this whole thing but you know yeah uh, this went on quite a long time uh, if you've watched this whole thing um, I don't know. Do you agree or do you disagree? I don't know. This film is my favorite of the trilogy. Again, the length is like a hundred. It's like a hundred minutes, uh, hour forty minutes. One of my longest videos I've ever made. Apologies for the length, but you know, I there's a lot I wanted to talk about with this. And I think I really should say you need to watch all three movies to understand. 
of the previous two movies to understand this film. Because Batman Begins, you know, this is essentially, uh, comes full circle with the League of Shadows. You need to see Batman Begins to understand this film. Also, you need to see The Dark Knight to understand this film, too. But many people didn't see Batman Begins. Just came into this because off The Dark Knight. Uh, some didn't care about Batman Begins for some reason, but... That's a great film. It's a, they're all great films. Christopher Nolan's a great filmmaker. He makes great movies. Um, and that's really all I have to say. Uh, this was fun. Talking about uh, director's filmography that I love and enjoy. Um, hope you like it. Maybe I'll do something like this again in the future, but... Enough of that. Hope you all have a good day, have a good weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye.